Shalom. I would like to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakudash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akim, pushing this word out across the four corners of the world. Just another news update through the spirit, the power, and the vibration of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. And I have an article from NewsTarget.com, and the title says, As the dollar dies, so will the U.S. military, Israel, Argentina, and anyone else foolish enough to shackle their economic future to a collapse in currency. And this article was published on November the 27th, 2023. And it says, Last week, Maria Z interviewed me on the Alice Jones show, and I mentioned something that everyone seems to be missing in the current maelstrom of geopolitics. That as the dollar dies, so does any other nation dependent on U.S. currency creation. Given Israel's heavy dependence on U.S. foreign air and the dollar funding of the U.S. Navy, when the dollar dies, Israel will face an existential threat of its own. It is the careless creation of trillions of dollars in U.S. currency that powers the Pentagon, after all. And America has to be that careless nation as it's identified within the scriptures. And that's because all of this excessive money printing has very negative and severe consequences. Like people who sell things for money, they will start raising the prices for their goods, services, and labor, a.k.a. inflation then that will lower the purchasing power and value of that particular currency, in this case, the U.S. dollar. So the more this American government print out more U.S. dollars in the circulation, then the more devalued and ultimately worthless this American dollar becomes. And this is all done by design. But going back to the point right here, it says, it is the careless creation of trillions of dollars in U.S. currency that powers the Pentagon. So hits the word careless. And that's because America, which is known as Babylon the Great, according to the Holy Scriptures, is known as the careless nation. And that takes me to Jeremiah 49 and 31. Arise, get you up unto the wealthy nation. And that's referring to America. That dwell it without care. The hierarchy of Esau Edom going into these international bankers and their minions who are all for this left hand great reset. They do not care about all of this intentional and excessive money printing. It's really hurting the American economy. And furthermore, these American citizens, like the American struggle, is very real. So this nation, America, it dwell it without care. And another example, and look at the current mindset of these modern Babylonians, referring to these Americans. They don't really take heed or into consideration of what's going on right now within the Middle East. Are these other third world countries going through straits like poverty, homelessness, disease, warfare, and the list goes on. So the most of these Americans are not coming to the conclusion of what's going on throughout the whole world of all this global warfare will soon be at America's doorsteps. So therefore, America has to be that careless nation. So arise, get you up into the wealthy nation that dwell it without care, said the Lord Yahweh which have neither gates nor bars, which dwell alone, which goes into how you can freely roam or travel within the so-called United States of America. Because back in the ancient days, those different ancient empires had walls set up for you to check in and to check out. You watch that movie Troy and also that show Spartacus displays that. All right, so back to the article. It is the careless creation of trillions of dollars in U.S. currency that powers the Pentagon after all. It also funds government propaganda ops like what we all suffered through during the C-19 years when the CDC and FDA ran a coordinated psychological operation against us all, trying to convince the weak-minded that emergency use Vs are safe and effective at preventing infections and halting transmission. We know now, of course, it was all an engineered lie, but it was a lie made possible through currency creation. Without easy money, a nation can no longer sustain its campaign of lies. And as the dollar collapses, so will the empire of lies, which might as well be the new name for the U.S. State Department and accompanying military industrial complex that gains power and profit from engineered mass human suffering and death. So the creator of this article referred America to the empire of lies. 
But that's indeed true. And we are definitely within those prophetic times where the crooked ways of Esau Edom is being searched out, as it says in the book of Obadiah. So a lot of these people within America are slowly but surely finding out about the things that we were taught coming up, especially within this school system or this fool system with nothing but lies. And again, all of this is prophetic. As it says again within Obadiah, how are the things of Esau being searched out? And how are his hidden things being sought up? And that's ultimately through Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which represents the spirit of truth, via the Holy Spirit through the true understanding of this word that he gave unto his true servants, the prophets, trickling on down to these whistleblowers and these so-called truthers. And according to the book of Luke 8 and 17, as it stated, for nothing is secret that should not be made manifest, neither anything hid that should not be known and come abroad. So everything comes out to the light. And that's exactly how you know we are at the end of Esau's chapter. Because within any movie, what happens at the end for the most part? The truth comes out. So therefore, how much more within the movie of Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai? And this thing that we call life. So going back to the point, the writer of this article made reference to America as the empire of lies. And that takes me to Nahum 3 and 1. Woe to the bloody city. And woe means destruction. And that bloody city is referencing to is America, which is spiritual Nineveh as well. So woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departed not. And the prey represents the biblical Israelites. Who are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans? And also for the ones of our people who might look like these other nations, but on your father's side, it registers back to those particular people I just mentioned. So this bloody city, America, is governed by the tabernacle of Esau Edom, who happens to be the so-called Caucasian race in today's time. And they are known as the wicked according to the Holy Bible. And when you read the book of Psalm 144 and 8, it's stated, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and a part of their vanity going into these hierarchy of Esau Edom, these international bankers who are engineering this so-called Great Reset, is by them thinking that they will fully and 100% be successful with this NWO. And also, that's why I stay within the book of Psalm, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And that's because this NWO or this so-called Great Reset of theirs is really intended by them to upset biblical prophecy and do away with the biblical Israelites. So that's a vain thing. So again, back in Psalm 144 and 8, whose mouth speaketh vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. And your right hand is supposed to represent a special position of honor, dignity, and special trust. And falsehood goes into a lie, which is exactly what we have been taught ever since we've been here within this captivity by the man of sin himself, Esau Edom. And especially along with his establishment, America, the empire of lies. All right, so back to the article. An empire of lies needs a mountain of money printing to stay in power. This empire of lies requires a mountain of money printing to keep it afloat. And to keep the wars active enough to justify ever more extreme violations of the principles that were once embraced by the liberal world order, but have since been abandoned. Principles like democracy, freedom, human rights, and self-determination. All four of those concepts now lie buried beneath the rubble of hospitals, universities, and residential apartment buildings in Gaza, having been bombed into oblivion by a war-minded nation, Israel, propped up by a financial terrorism regime, the USA. Without aggressive money printing by the USA, Israel has no substantial financial backing from the West, nor would Ukraine, which has nearly run its course as the puppet proxy of the West and is about to be tossed aside by Western powers now that the money luxury racket has just about reached its end. The United States of America is now nearly $44 trillion in debt, and unfunded liabilities have reached an eye-popping $200 trillion. These numbers are beyond the comprehension of most people. And as is stated within Isaiah the 60th chapter about gross darkness to people, 
pretty much going into how it's a spiritual veil on the mass majority of these so-called Americans. You still have a lot of them believe everything that they see and hear on mainstream media, which is a heavy and demonic propaganda machine created by the man of sin himself. So these numbers are beyond the comprehension of most people, which is just as well since no one in Washington, D.C. is even bothering to try to bring them back to any level of reason or fiscal responsibility. Instead, the spending proceeds at a frantic pace, primarily in these three areas that I have repeatedly warned now represent the core pillars of the U.S. empire, disease, death, and death, the triple Ds. And those triple Ds represent just another form or fashion of Esau's sword. As is stated within the book of Psalm 17 and 13, this support him, cast him down, referring to the hierarchy of Esau Edom, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. And these Edomites, starting from the hierarchy of them, are definitely a part of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah's sword on that left hand side. And again, those triple Ds, which are disease, death, and death, goes into Esau's blessing on that left hand side and how he has overcame nations, including the biblical Israelites, to be in that top position of rulership in today's time. And that takes me to Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red, referring to the biblical Edomites, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And according to the book of Job 9 and 24, the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. And when you read Malachi, the first chapter, it goes into how Esau, Edom is the border of wickedness. And these are base people that Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah have an end of nation will forever. And by their wicked vibration being into that power seat of rulership, according to the book of Psalm, the 82nd chapter, it goes into how the foundations of the earth are out of course. So therefore, everything is turned upside down via this current rulership. And also right here, as it says, and power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth. And that backs up Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. First and foremost, look how this planet earth is in a mournful state, trickling on down to the inhabitants of the earth. And that they should kill one another, and that was given unto him a great sword which ties right back within this article, the core pillars of the U.S. empire, disease, death, and death. So for disease, it says nearly $1.5 trillion a year is now spent on Medicare and Medicaid, which primarily offered payouts to the disease industry known as BIT-P. In a failed system of Western medicine, hospitals that express near zero proficiency in preventing disease or death. And that big P, known as the disease industry, is tied in with Esau's pharmakia, which is the Greek way of saying pharmacy. And that's the use of the ministry of so-called drugs, which is nothing but poisonings, sorceries, witchcrafts, and a part of his magic arts. And when you read the book of Nahum 3 and 4, it goes into about the multitude of the whoredoms of that well-favored harlot. And that's indeed referencing to America, which again, is also known as Babylon the Great, because she's likened to a great whore that seduced a lot of nations by her flattery, her enchantments, and her sorceries, which is identified within the book of Revelation as that Babylonian wine that has spiritually intoxicated all these nations. So referencing back unto Nahum 3 and 4, about the multitude of the whoredoms of that well-favored harlot and the mistress of witchcrafts, which indeed is going into this disease industry known as Big P, that former Kia. All right, so number two, DEP. Social Security now costs the U.S. federal government nearly $1.4 trillion a year, paying American workers a fraction of what the government once stole from their paychecks especially when considering the rapidly diminishing value of today's dollars. So again, like I stated earlier, by this intentional excessive money printing, it is all engineered and orchestrated to do away with this cash-based economy. 
And when you read the book of Habakkuk 2 and 6, it goes into about that parable in that tilted proverb against him, referring to Esau, aka these international bakers, how they have laden themselves with thick clay. And that thick clay goes into this U.S. debt based system or economy. And will soon globally reset this earth into a digital currency based system. All right, so number three, depth. Over $800 billion is spent each year on the deaf industry. U.S. defense and war operations, which nationally focus on occupying, attacking, and threatening other nations around the world while claiming to be protecting democracy. And again, referencing back onto the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, the eighth verse, it goes into how Esau has spoiled many nations and how they bring violence to another person's land or city, all in the name of democracy. Then we'll push that false narrative upon that particular nation and demonize them to the world, again, that mainstream propaganda machine, while stealing their natural resources. This is a part of America's criminal behavior. And now these other nations are seeing what America's true intent is all about. So we'll jump on down. These three pillars of the U.S. empire, disease, depth, and death, are now the total obsession of Western culture where career-minded citizens flock to bit P, bit finance, and bit war, the defense industry, to cash in because that's where the money is found. And that money trail always goes back into these international bankers, which is why it's a popular documentary out in today's time called All Wars or Bankers Wars. And you had this guy by the name of Henry Heine. He stated, money is the God of our time. And Rothschild is his prophet. So it says right here, but disease, death, and death do not lead a prosperous or sustainable society. They produce short-term financial riches at the expense of long-term national abundance. You cannot bomb your way to peace and prosperity. You cannot medicate your way to good health. You cannot create wealth by counterfeiting currency. That's why the U.S. empire is collapsing. It rewarded profit, power, and greed over sustainability, prosperity, and liberty, all of which are necessary conditions for the kind of innovation that's required to advance a civilization. Thus, America is moving backward, not forward. In the collapse of the West, which will include much of Western Europe, Canada, Australia, and related nations, is now far being a tipping point and cannot be halted. Once the collapse runs its course, any nation foolish enough to be tied to the dollar, including Argentina and Israel, will experience the sudden loss of everything those dollars once provided. Critically for Israel, this includes the U.S. military or forces, i.e. carrier strike groups, which of course cannot function without financial support. Just as the military of the former USSR collapsed and broke into a thousand pieces like Humpty Dumpty, when the dollar dies, the U.S. military shatters and cannot be put back together again. Perhaps this is the plan of the globalists all alone. Either way, the level of human suffering, famine, destitution, homelessness, chaos, violence, etc. will be unprecedented. So like within that article it stated, that's why the U.S. empire is collapsing. In other words, it's failing on all levels. It's breaking down. And as it says within Isaiah, the 24th chapter, how the city of confusion, again, referencing to America, is broken down. And that takes me to Revelation 18 and 1. And as you can see from the subject, Babylon is falling. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils, and the hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So by Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils, and the hole of every foul spirit. It's the aftermath of Yahweh's second arrival, aka that second death, and also the battle of Armageddon, World War III. The after effects of those nuclear missiles will cause America to be that lake of fire. And after that fire is settled, which is going to be for a period of time, according to the book of Isaiah 34 and 11, it goes into about the cormorant 
and the bitter should possess it, and how the owl also and the raven should dwell in it. So these different unclean birds are going to be the new tenants in America. Because when Yahawashah along with the angels get done with this place within one hour, America will no longer be inhabited by people. So that concludes the lesson through the spirit. As the dollar dies, so will the U.S. military, Israel, Argentina, and anyone else foolish enough to shackle their economic future to a collapsing currency. And as it's stated within 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, the end of all things is at hand. And we are definitely within the end of this cash-based economy, and it's about to be transitioning to a digital currency paradigm which is ultimately going to lead into the MOTB. So with that, hopefully you all stay edified, you all stay strong, keep pushing forward. Shalom.